in the second letter to Timothy, God presents us four different professions. The soldier, the athlete, the farmer, and the laborer. Each of the professions shows us characteristics that we can apply in our Christian lives. Today's video is about the soldier. So we want to reflect briefly on eight points that characterize a soldier. Therefore, we read 2 Timothy 3, verse 3 and 4. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he might please him who enlisted him as a soldier. First, every soldier has a commander. As it is in the military, so it is for us Christians. We have the best and only infallible commander, the Lord Jesus. He knows each of his soldiers personally, loves each one infinitely, and even gave his life for us. Each of his commands and orders is correct and tailored to the individual. It is up to you and me to recognize his order and simply be obedient. Second, a soldier is ready to accept difficulties. He is ready to endure hardships, difficulties and dangerous situations and is even ready to suffer. Difficulties are also part of life for us as Christians. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 says, All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. When we experience difficulties, we must not give up, but persevere. Third, the soldier is engaged in warfare. If a soldier sleeps or is inactive, he is useless and even a danger to his comrades. As believing Christians, activity must also characterize us. By this, I don't mean activity just for the sake of it. No, but we should conscientiously and obediently carry out the particular order that God gives us just as a soldier carries out the order of his superior. Fourth, the soldier is focused and does not get entangled in the preoccupations of life. Imagine a soldier who does everything else instead of fighting with all his strength for his country or the specific mission. Unthinkable, but it is not uncommon for us Christians. How much time and energy do we spend on Bible reading and spiritual activities? And how much time and energy do we spend on sports, cell phone, watching TV or anything else? The question here is one of priority. Who or what comes first for you and me? God and his concerns or the pursuits of life? Fifth, soldiers need discipline. We can also say self-discipline. When soldiers go into battle, personal sensitivities are out of place. It is solely about fulfilling the mission and not about one's own comfort. How much energy can I often devote to my desires and goals? But when it comes to prayer or Bible study or gospel work, fatigue or other appointments are an excuse for not being able to get involved. Sixth, the soldier pleases his employer. Paul exhorts his young brother, co-worker and friend Timothy not to get caught up in the business of life so that he may please him who enlisted him. So setting the right priorities is a prerequisite to pleasing our Lord. The goal of our lives should be to please our commander Christ. If we are willing to obey him and put ourselves and our desires aside for his sake, we can be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Seventh, the soldier is ready to stake his life. For soldiers, it is part of their profession that they might have to lay down their lives in battle for their fatherland. God's word also calls us to be ready to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters if necessary. John writes about this in his first letter in chapter 3, verse 16. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, 
and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And eight, the soldier is also a comrade. This aspect is not expressed in the verse here, yet comradeship is something very special among soldiers. The motto, one for all and all for one, is vital, especially for soldiers in difficult situations. For us as Christians, this is the idea of fellowship and brotherly love. In 1 John 4, verse 11, we read, Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also ought to love one another. And in Galatians 6, verse 2, we read, Bear one another's burdens. Paul reports about the couple Priscilla and Aquila, that they risked their lives for his life. What a proof of love for Paul! And what evidence of divine love in the hearts of these two believers. I wonder if you and I would show the same willingness. Unfortunately, we are often just too comfortable. But remember that we can rest in eternity. But now it is the time to be active and to be good soldiers of Christ.